Welcome to another recall by Dedeku video. I'm Joma and I'm going to talk about how I got an internship at Facebook as a data scientist. So I interned at Facebook when it was still called Facebook. So that was back in 2015 in the fall. Previously, I did two internships at Citadel and LinkedIn as a software engineer, which is why I wanted to try something different, which is why I applied to the data science analytics position at Facebook. Their data science analytics position is more of an analytics role. So that means you're more of a product analyst. So you're going to be assigned to a team and your role is to query a huge amount of data so that you could be more intimate with the product. Most people will rely on you for answers. So this role can be extremely valuable to the team. So when you think about it, you're essentially the person that knows the product inside out better than anyone else because you've been playing with the data, you understand the users, you understand every single thing about the product. So that means you should be the one thinking about the long term strategy of the product or even the tactics. That's why you work with product managers very hand in hand to figure out the best decisions to make for the product. So to be precise, I use a lot of SQL to query the data, and then I use Python to do some scripting or analysis. And I also use tools like Excel and Tableau to create charts for my presentation. DataKu has similar tools for querying data, scripting, and analysis, but instead it's all in one platform. All right, so let's take my job as an example. So when I was at Facebook, I was working for Facebook groups. Uh, in case you don't know, Facebook groups, what that is, is it's a product on Facebook where you can create, well, groups where you can invite people and then you just interact with each other. You can post there, you can share files and stuff like that. There are like very big public groups like SF Bay Area Warriors fans or something, or you can have very, very small private groups like Joma's Cool Circle of Friends. So the goal of the team is to grow this product and we had a goal of reaching 1 billion monthly active users. And active users just means if ever that user interacted with a group, then they are an active user. So I was part of two strategies. The first strategy is to understand why certain groups fail, as in they churn, or why certain groups succeed and they start being very active. And then the second strategy is to try to use notifications to get people to use groups more often. To get groups to survive, we had to figure out what factors most contribute to a group's survival. I did some analysis and I found that it was very correlated with how much time these users spent on the groups. And that in itself was explained by how often the admins and the moderators would post in that group during the first week of creating that group. So basically that was the analysis I had to do. To be honest, it was pretty annoying because I had to clean the data constantly. And when you think about it, there are a lot of bugs that can affect it, front end bugs, logging bugs, all of that would contribute to like errors in the data. So I had to spend a lot of time cleaning it, which is why I want to talk about data EQ because it would have saved me a lot of time. So in data EQ, you have this view where it shows all the recipes and data sets that you used. Recipes are basically operations, transformations, or scripts that you apply to the data sets. I find this super clean and organized as opposed to how I did it. Yeah, we're not gonna talk about my organizational skills. All right, check this out. There are simple recipes that are often used. These are the visual recipes. I often just do that directly on SQL, but the problem is if I change my mind and I want to apply something different, I have to rerun all my queries again. And it's also very prone to mistakes. If I had this graph-like interface, it would have been a lot easier to manage and less prone to errors. You could do more complicated procedures by using code recipes if you want to do something very custom and niche. So after I finish cleaning my data, uh, I would play around with it and ask questions like, what's the difference between country to country in terms of behaviors in this group? And sometimes I would even go deep inside the group and actually look at the group to try to understand why do some groups succeed and why do some groups fail and churn? All right, so let's talk about how I got into Facebook. So. Previously, I was already a pretty technical candidate because I did a lot of software engineering internships. So that was already pretty good because Facebook, or at least um, for the data science uh, position, they're looking for people with technical backgrounds, like either Bachelor of Math, Bachelor of Computer Science, or Engineering. So because of my background, I just got the interview. 
So we had an interviewer at Waterloo, which is the school that I went to, and they asked me three questions. Uh, the first question was a probability question. It was uh, very simple. Given a triangle and there's a rabbit on each corner of the triangle, the rabbits can either move to the left or to the right. What are the odds that none of them will hit each other? The answer was one fourth because the first rabbit can either go left or right, but if it goes right, then all the other rabbits have to go right for them to not hit each other, right? So it's one times one half times one half because the probability of that rabbit going to the right is one half and the probability of this rabbit going to the right is one half. So that's what you do. And then they ask you, oh, can you generalize this? Imagine it's a square or imagine it's a pentagon, you know, and stuff like that. So what would the formula be? So the answer is one to the two exponent n minus one where n is the number of corners. So then the next question, they asked you a SQL question. Uh, they gave you two tables and you have to write a SQL query to kind of join them in a specific way. I don't actually remember the question, but I just remember that you had to do some fancy joins and filtering process. It wasn't super, super hard, but it did test your SQL skills. The last question was a product question. They wanted to make sure that you had product intuition, product sense. So the question was really simple. It was like, why at Facebook do we care about friends? Like, why do we care about users having friends on Facebook? So I just said, well, isn't that the whole point of the Facebook app is to connect with friends? But basically you had to expand on that. Like, yes, if you make a connection, then they kind of know exactly what kind of content you're interested in or so that we can actually populate content for you because apparently the code start process for onboarding a user is the most difficult time. And without friends, it's really hard for these um, users to stick around they found that the retention of a new user is highly dependent on how many friends they have in the beginning, in the first week. So that question was important because no matter how much data you have as a data scientist, if you don't know what you're looking for or what questions to ask with those data, you're not gonna go anywhere. So after that in-person interview, a few days later, I actually got a phone call and it was a phone interview. So this phone interview was a coding interview, which is funny because, you know, as a data scientist, you don't code that much, which is why they only asked you to kind of talk about your solution. The question was really simple. It was basically the question about um, given an array, there are numbers one to N, but one of the numbers between one to N is missing. So basically if you have a array of size four, it would be the array one, two, three, four, but maybe three would be gone. And then your task is to find out which number is gone. But then they would give you the second version of the question, which is, okay, now you have two numbers missing. How would you find out which two numbers are missing? So I could put the answer in the link in the description. Uh, it's a very popular question, so you might already know it. And after you answer that, they're going to um, kind of judge you on whether you know how to code or not. And then if you pass that, congratulations, you got a job at Facebook as a data scientist. Analytics. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope that was useful for you. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.